Nice. Look at that. Take a 25 second exposure, watch it count down, and we should get a decent image here. While we're waiting, we can go look at where we're, where we're at in the sky. So that is straight up. Actually, that's Polaris, so let's turn on landscape real quick. So this is north looking straight out the back patio. Up a little bit is Polaris and straight. Oh, that's straight up. Zenith is straight up. Sorry, that grid is confusing me. I'm going to turn it off. Yeah, because the telescope is pointed there. The moon, that's straight up. And then the moon is behind us, the south. So, it's really cool that you can see this. The Milky Way is right in line with the horizon. You can see the band going all the way around, basically. Anyways, all the planets are on the other side of the Earth. That's my horizon. Straight up, and this is our target. This is the Big Dipper. It's a part of the Great Bear. Um, the Big Dipper is not a constellation. It's just the asterism, which is a well-known name for a well-known object in the sky, but it's not an actual constellation itself. So the red is where I could go. Wherever I put the red, I can move to that spot. Um, but the blue is where the camera is. So if we zoom in, that's our target, the Whirlpool Galaxy. But there's also, this is the end of the Big Dipper. There's also a target right about here, triangle, with these three stars. Um, there it is, M101. That's another big one that's really good. So let's get out of here and see where we're at. There we are. So it is taken of bottom, very bottom text. It says in the middle, it is stacked five images. It's ignored zero of them, so the telescope is guiding well. I'm sorry, not guiding, um, but tracking well. Um, and there's still an hour left of images to take. We don't really need to do that. I'm just having fun tonight. Looking on the histogram and see, move these sliders around, see if we could pull out a little bit more stretch and move that one there we go we go a little bit more yep and a little bit more maybe we can pull up some of the red one a little bit so we crop this this vignetting out we can do that and get a good image like that so the, all that grain structure and fuzz and looks like a bunch of different colored pixels. Um, that's called noise and with this live stacking it's basically taking single exposures and stacking them on top of each other uh, with a little transparency. and. Every time there's an image, this, these dots of noise will be in different locations. After you stack a bunch of images and, and with a tiny bit of transparency, um, the fuzz fills in all the gaps of the dark spots and the light spots and kind of equals out to a flat, nice, smooth color and gets rid of that all that noise color. 
um, and that's what we want in this live stacking feature. Every single frame it takes, we've stacked 10 so far, every single frame, the detail in this is going to get better, uh, and that's what we want. So, 11 frames now, it's stacking the 12th, uh, loading the 12th, I'm looking at the very bottom right corner for that green status bar. It's downloading at 1.8 megabytes per second. That is because we are on Wi-Fi. Uh, the telescope is wirelessly sending the data to my iPad, and we get to watch everything as the images come in. We get to control everything from Wi-Fi to the temperature of the camera, to the CPU's temperature, go down to the camera settings. We can uh, change the gain. We have a target cooling temperature of eight, negative 18 degrees Fahrenheit right now. Um, we can go, we're not guiding right now because I don't have a guide camera on, but the mount is hooked up to the uh, ASI Air Plus and it is tracking for us nicely. And I don't have an electronic filter wheel, but that can switch different filters in there uh, automatically with the computerized uh, motor. I do have an electronic autofocuser right now and um, we did do an autofocus but it has gotten cooler and with cooler it with a colder temperature um, you actually get uh, loss in focus and I haven't done a new autofocus. I'm just having fun tonight. Tomorrow is the blood moon and I'm really excited for that because it's my birthday um, so we've done 15 images so far ignore none gain of 140 we're at negative 0.8 degrees Fahrenheit it's warm outside right now uh, so the coolers having a hard time cooling down the camera to negative 18 degrees Fahrenheit but that's fine the colder the sensor the the colder the sensor, the less noise you have. Anyways, I'm happy with this. We're going to go ahead and press save. Um, and after this last one, I'll press stop. Cool. 16 images stacked. And still play around with gram a bunch and, and see what... Um, I have to work with later on in processing on the computer. Uh, let's go to our next target. How about that? Preview. We'll exit the live stack. Open up the control of the telescope. Press the search button. Now we're back to all of these images. So, um, is galaxy season right now and there are so many galaxies straight up above, which is the best part of the sky to image at. So, I am going to look for something to image that I have never imaged before because I am doing the Messier Marathon. Charles Messier was a French astron astronomer who was on the Northern Hemisphere, which is where I am, in Tucson, Arizona, and he cataloged from France. Um, 116 objects, I believe, and they're all these M10, M26, it's M, M1 through 116 or so, some approximately. Um, anyways, he cataloged all of those in the Northern Hemisphere, some of the brightest objects available to our skies, or to our telescopes, so it's a really good list to go off of. There's the NGC list, um, numerical general catalog. There is the IC list, like this, IC59. Um, there's the SH list. There's so many objects, hundreds of thousands of objects in the sky, and they're all completely different. One of my favorites is this sombrero galaxy, just the thickness of that that edge on galaxy disk is so cool but 
The blue line is our current time. The red hump shows when the object is highest in the sky, and the green line shows the peak highest spot in that red hill. Um, so, if the blue dot and the green dot are close to each other, like this blue one right here, um, uh, it says 2218, uh, the closer those two are together, the better the quality of image you're going to get because you're looking straight up instead of out throughout the horizon and all that atmosphere and air you're looking through. When you're looking straight up, you're not looking through anything. So this one right here, 20 NGC 4438, that is straight up, which is a really good spot to shoot. Look at this guy, that's weird. Like I said, there's so many objects and all of them are different. Look at that structure inside. There's a dust lane going through. It's like a ninja star, right? <laughs> Anyways, this is very fun because it's so easy. Once you get it set up after about 20 minutes, you're good to go and you can just go through here pick an object and tell the telescope to move to it and it will move to it on its own and then you can set up your imaging run for the entire night or you can do live stacking to view immediately like I am right now um, you can press plan and set up multiple objects for the telescope to go through for hours and hours throughout the night while you go inside and sleep and I've never done that before because I'm always scared that the cables are going to get snagged. And I've always been too lazy to actually set up the whole run because I don't think I am ready for that. But um, I know that I probably am. I just, I don't know. It's a lot. And I hear coyotes now. They do not like the green laser pointer, so if I do point the laser out into the desert right behind our house, um, they'll shut up, but then I don't know where they are, so I'll let them do their thing. Um, anyways, it's a, it's like a 95% moon right now, or 89% moon or something. It's very bright, and it's lighting up the entire valley and desert behind the house. So I can see if there's any tarantulas or rattlesnakes or bugs or scorpions or anything like that around my feet and the telescope. Which is nice, because I do not like that stuff. But, um, yeah, I could bring the spotlight out and light up those coyotes and scare them off. But I don't want to ruin their natural habitat and things like that so um i just imaged this one earlier i love obviously the perfect circle disc but i really love the 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 bright orange center not the center star but the lines coming off of it on either direction there's perfectly symmetrical superman symbol i just love that This one's also super cool, um, directly edge on galaxy. So all galaxies usually are flat, thin disks. So this one is face on, so it's it's like frisbee uh, tilted directly towards us, and this one is tilted directly horizontally, so we can only see the edge. If it turned towards us, it'd probably be a huge, huge uh, disc. So, this one looks really cool, too. Uh, it's so hard to pick because there's so many. And I, I'm acting like it takes a lot of time to get, to get an image, but it doesn't. Um, it's, it captures the images super fast, like I just showed you. Very, very cool. Okay, let's freaking pick one, please. <laughs> it's 
someday. Okay, these are all really tiny. It, sh it tells you underneath the green text the location in right ascension and declination, and then on to the right side it or the right side of the green text it says magnitude, that's the brightness. And then the size, 3.9 by 3.0, it's very small. Um, the last image we just took was 5.9 by 5.7, I believe, approximately. I always just say approximately, I guess, because people chew me out for saying the wrong information. The Owl Nebula. Ooh, let's do that. Okay, so we'll press this all the way to the right. It says go to. Press that. Boom. Now we're going to listen to the mount go to the position. And... I believe this is looking directly over Tucson, which is not good, because uh, there's a huge amount of sky glow. Nope, still moving, going above it, which is great. Okay, that might work. Let's see what we get. Mounts lose to target position. Validating centered or not by shooting an image and using the internal map of the of the sky and objects to to uh, compare itself to. And if it's not objects not near the map or the stars that's around it, it doesn't match up to the stars on the computer. It will move them out a little bit and reshoot and keep doing that until it finds a target and look at that boom target centered let's see what we get wait for it oof so you see that that is complete completely bad focus um so i do see a smudge right in the center though so let's go ahead and do this i'm going to move this exposure time down to one second um, and start an exposure and I'm going to change the focus with the electronic motor focuser and we're going to try these stars they're donuts right now and we want them to be tiny tops we want them to be as small as possible so watch it take one second image of I'm going the right direction with the focus knob. I'm holding up right now. Watching the donuts to see if they start to get bigger or small. Okay, they're getting bigger. Dang it, I went the wrong way. Now I'm gonna press down and hold it. And it might take a 30 seconds or so for it to catch up. Not the display. There's some in the interiors. There is some space between the, and so because of this motor focuser, the focuser motor spins so the most precise focusing or availability. Um, it takes a while gears to catch up and start turning uh, the next gear and then the next gear. You saw, if you looked at the, the focusing knob on the back of the telescope where the motor's connected, you would see that it's moving very slow. Okay, stars are getting smaller. I'm going to let go because it's for this display to catch up. And that should be about it. Ooh. Alright, I'm going to hold this down for two more seconds. Let go and see... You can see the Owl Nebula. It's cool. Check it 
trying to make this stuff the little donuts into actual tiny circles. So I'm zooming in with my fingers. And I think that's about it almost. See when you get when you get into focus, all these tiny little pop out, out of the fuzz. And that means you're you got focus. So I think we're there. So let's stop this. We can zoom out. Go to live. We're still doing 25 seconds. And we'll clear this image to give it a clean slate and press start. Now we get to watch as the owl nebula pops out. You see how amazing this is? Look how centered the owl nebula is in the field of view. This computer system is fantastic at finding objects and centering them all on their own. I did not have any influence on centering. It did it by itself with the camera and the plate solving mapping software that's inside. Alright, the first image is coming through. Loading at 6 megabytes per second. 10, 9, 7, 8, 5... I'm really far away from the... Oh, look at that. We have another galaxy in the view. Wow. I wonder what that is. Okay, we can go to Tools on the bottom left here. And then go to Annotate. I missed it. Okay, so we have the Owl Nebula M97. And then we got M108 too. Yes. That means I can mark that one off the list of the Messier Marathon as well. So, you see how... So now that I know that we have two galaxies here, which is really cool. Actually, the Owl Nebula is a planetary nebula. Uh, M108 galaxy. So, I'm going to go to the map down here. And this is showing me what, like I said before, this is what the camera can see. You can see M108 off to the bottom, even though um, the camera is flipping the image, so keep that in mind. So, the Owl Nebula in the center, what we want is move the center of field right between the two, so we can get both images nice in view. So, we'll move that. The red is where I want to go, the blue is where it is. So I want this cross right between the two. And then I will press go to cross at the very bottom right. It says exposing can't go to, so I'm going to go back. Cancel this exposure. Now I'll go back to the map and move to right here. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do this. Uh, I want to. Let's see where we're at. We are, oh, right near Mirac on the Big Dipper. Okay, so let's go put the cross right in the middle. Yeah, does that look good? And then we're going to press the bottom right, go to cross. Okay, it's going to take a picture, validating centered or not, at the bottom left it's telling me what's happening. Taking another image, go to success, awesome, alright, we'll go back, and then we will start another live stack. Let's, oh, cancel, we have to clear this image first or else the new image will try to be stacking to that and it won't work. So I cleared that image, and we're starting fresh. 25 seconds. I'm really excited, because I've never imaged these two galaxies before. It's starting to cool down out here, so this might be the last one that I do. But, now you guys know what I do at night once in a while. Kira is inside on the couch, um, enjoying a TV show all by herself. She doesn't mind at all, trust me. <laughs> no. 
I'm kidding. She loves me, and I love her, and we have a great time watching TV shows and laughing and having fun and making fun of, of goofy actors, and anyways. So, let's take off the annotation, because it's distracting. There's our first image. Look at that. Right where we asked it to go. The center is right between, and we can tell that by going to tools and crosshair. Look at this. How amazing is technology today? Um, Charles Messier in front have this technology when he was doing this. But he still found these galaxies and cataloged them. And he drew pictures to remember them. And, I mean, I just... This is so cool. I can't believe I'm capturing the galaxies. The galaxy M1 8 and the Owl Nebula right now. We can also press Detect Star and it will tell us our average star size in frame. Two point six three. That's good. Anything below three focus in my book. So uh, look at this. How cool is that? We have the owl nebula here, which looks like an owl f circular owl face with two eyes. And then we have this really cool looking galaxy here. So let's switch up the histogram and dial it in and try to get some more detail. Very cool. You can see a red hydrogen edge, um, just barely. Red hydrogen edge, a greenish teal center, which is oxygen. That is just phenomenal. Are there any other galaxies in the frame that we can see? Any type of fuzz or blur? Like right in the center. Nope, that's probably just a star. Actually, what we can do is go to the map and see if there are any galaxies around. So this update just came out where you can actually do use a map on this app. This whole system right that I'm on was not here three months ago. Which is crazy, because this is such a cool system. I can look at the map, I can go look through the galaxy at different um, objects, and tell the telescope to go through it. Before, all we had was that list of objects. We didn't have a map that we can center and center our target with. And look at all these cool objects throughout the Milky Way. It is just Fascinating to me and absolutely stunning. It's so fun being out here and doing this and just hunting for stuff. We don't even need to use the list. We could just search for stuff right here. But let's go back to the image. Yeah, look at the detail that's coming in now. So the fuzziness is smoothing out. The galaxy to get more details. You can see some orange and a dust line going through. I want to see what galaxy this actually is. So, I wonder if we could do that right now. So it's M108. I know that. But can we click on it? And view any information? Go to object, align, center, nope, 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 nope. There we go. Search. M108. Alright, this 
this is what we're looking at. And yeah, check it out. That black dust lane. Or the black stuff that's in front of the bright stuff. I'm starting to see it. How about you guys? Um, I'm serious. Are, are you guys seeing it too? Or is it just... How do I get out of here? Cancel. Oh, that was in the way. Okay, cancel. Go back. Back. Yeah, check it out. You can see the black stuff in front of the bright white stuff. Or the bright orangish yellow. That is so cool. You guys want to see that? what the Owl Nebula looks like? Let's go back. Search. So check that out. How cool is that? This is just so impressive and fun. You can view comets, satellites, all types of crap. Sorry, not crap. Stuff. So I'm going to save this. We've stacked 15 exposures, just like the last one. We're going to cancel this and shut down and go inside. Thank you all for being here and enjoying this wonderful night with me. It is gorgeous outside. And I can't wait for my birthday and the blood moon. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. This is Astro Dragon, Carlos Aragon, from Reach for the Stars Astronomy Nonprofit, helping kids, teens, and adults feel better and have healthier, happier lives through astronomy. Take care.